tripods. They are one of the best investments that you can make in your filmmaking kit. If you get a good tripod, it will last you at least five, six, seven, even 10 years, as long as you treat it well. Just look at my Magnus VT4000. I got this thing way back in 2010 when I was a junior in high school. So I think it's time for an upgrade, don't you think? Today I'm going to be reviewing the Small Rig Heavy Duty Carbon Fiber Tripod. Quick disclaimer, I was sent this unit, but I wasn't paid to say any of this in this video. I did demo this at NAB back in April at this Small Rig booth, and that was a lot of fun. I got to really know this tripod in and out after I like demoed it like 300 times. And I instantly knew that this tripod definitely had to be a part of my filmmaking kit. And I'm super excited to share with you guys this tripod. So let's dive straight in, starting from the bottom, the legs of the tripod, and then we're gonna work our way up to the fluid head of the tripod and show you guys all of its features. So first up, the feet. As you can tell, it's gold covered and it's got this uh, anti-slip rubber material at the bottom so that on wood floors or any tile flooring, it won't move around. Now let's say you are in rocky terrain or like sand or whatever, where you need a little bit more friction or you need a little bit more grip. In those situations, what you would do is press on this little quick release lever in the back right here. And then all you need to do is slide off the cover. And at the bottom of the feet are spikes, which gives you a lot more grip. And once you're done, all you need to do is line it right back up and you just slide it right back on and it'll click into place. And I love that feature because it's really quick to switch between having anti-slip and also having spikes. Now this tripod comes with a center spreader, which means that you can narrow down your base if you're in a tight space, or you can widen it out up to 10 inches if you need that stability. And since this spreader only opens up to 10 inches, you aren't gonna be getting those super low angle shots using this tripod. But for me and what I shoot, this is definitely good enough already. Now moving on to the legs, this is easily my favorite part of the entire tripod. This is what sold it for me when I was demoing this unit at NAB. The Free Blazer has one lock for all three stages, which means it's a lot easier and much quicker to lower and also raise the tripod. Its maximum height is six feet, five inches, which is like incredibly tall. It's taller than me. So it's perfect for like concerts or anything where you need to raise the tripod super high in order to see over things or over people. And its lowest height is three feet one inch. This thing is 100% much easier and much faster to use than my Magnus VT4000. The legs are made out of carbon fiber, which means it's lightweight, but also durable and really strong. And the legs alone can hold up to 55 pounds of payload, which for me is completely overkill. I probably would never ever even get up to that type of payload with the setup that I'm currently running. Now you can actually adjust how loose or tight this lever is. You can use an Allen key to tighten up the bolt or loosen up the bolt in order to change the resistance profile of the knuckle. One really cool feature that they've added to the tripod is the silicone rubber grips that are right above the legs that allow you to easily and comfortably grip and hold onto the tripod as you're moving around or transporting the tripod, especially with the camera on top of it, it makes the whole payload a lot heavier. And without these, it kind of like digs into the palm of your hands. I found that it kind of is uncomfortable. Um, and so this is a really nice touch. That's it for the legs. We're gonna move on to the tripod head itself. Again, starting from the bottom, this handle right here to loosen or tighten the ball head. It's really grippy, has this like rubber texture to it. And it's really nice to grip onto. It's comfortable. A lot of times on tripods that I've seen before, they're short. It's made out of hard plastic, which makes it hurt to turn. But this one, it has a nice length. It's it's rubber, it's really easy to just grip onto it and twist. This is a 75 millimeter bowl, which is pretty standard for a lot of video tripod heads. So in case you wanted to use your own tripod head to mount onto the legs, um, you could swap it out. The maximum payload of the head itself is about 22 pounds, which for me is good enough. For a lot of people, I'm sure it's already good enough, but if you needed something that's a little bit more heavy duty, um, then you can definitely swap it out as long as you have a 75 millimeter head or an adapter for your own head. For me, with my Canon C70 fully raked out, I don't really think it can even reach up to 22 pounds. So I think for most filmmakers, this head is already good enough. Now, moving on to the pan axis, you unlock it using this little knob right here, and it has a stepless dampening adjustment. So if you turn towards the right hand side, it loosens, it makes it less tight and you can decrease the resistance and it makes it easier to pan. But if you need a little bit more resistance for those smoother panning shots, you can twist it to the opposite direction and that will give you a much 
tighter, a much more stronger resistance so that you can get those really smooth and slow panning shots. The dampening ring itself turns quite a bit, so it gives you a lot of like flexibility depending on how much resistance you actually need for the shot that you're getting. Now the tilt axis doesn't have something similar to that ring for the dampening, but if you wanted to increase or decrease the resistance, all you need to do is just kind of tighten it up and that will give you the resistance that you need. Another great feature about this video head is that it tilts forward 90 degrees, which makes it a lot easier to get certain top-down shots without having to boom out the camera onto like an arm or something like that. And it also has a backwards tilt of 60 degrees. Now this arm right here can be mounted either on the right side or the left side, depending on which way you want to operate on. There's also a quarter inch screw at the front right here so you can add on different accessories. A really cool feature about the arm is that it telescopes, which means you can either lengthen it or shorten it depending on your situation. For example, if you are shooting in a tighter space, you will probably want to have this as short as possible in order to give yourself enough room. But if you're doing any tilting or panning in your shot, having a longer handle might give you smoother movement. I really love this feature a lot. I think a lot more tripods should come with this feature included. It just gives you a lot more flexibility in terms of your shooting situations. And in typical small rig fashion, they've added in a Allen key so that you can use it whenever you need it. Now, if I were to pick at something specifically about this tripod that I don't like. It's a little leveler right here that's kind of like tucked inside the middle of the tripod, which sometimes if you have your rig on here, it can be a little bit hard to see uh, where your bubble or where your level is. Uh, so that's the only slight little criticism that I have of the tripod, but we're gonna move on to the top of the tripod head. And the first thing that you'll notice is that it's got two screws, one quarter inch and one three eighths inch, which makes it a lot more secure when it's attached to your camera. And the way that you detach the base plate is you loosen it right here on the side and then you push this little button right here and that pops it right off and you can unload it from the side. And when you're ready to reattach to the tripod, all you need to do is slide it into the side and then just click it into place and then lock it right in place and that thing is not going anywhere. I'm a huge fan of side loading plates because it just makes it a lot easier to just simply slide it on and slap it right in instead of just finding where the slot is and it's hard to align. This way it's a lot quicker to attach your base plate. Now another really cool awesome feature about the tripod is that not only do they take standard Manfrotto plates but if you press down on this button right here it allows you to use DJI RS2 and RS3 plates without having to take it off. And all you need to do is just, again, slide it in, and now it locks right into place without having to take off your base plate off of your gimbal and then reattaching it to the Manfrotto ones. This way, it's a lot easier to switch from gimbal to tripod and then back to gimbal again. And just to see how stable and secure this whole tripod is, I'm going to raise it up a little bit, so about right here. And then I'm just gonna push down and see if I can get it to buckle. So far, it's not really giving me anything. I'm gonna lower it actually, it might be too tall. So like right here. Like I, you really have to put a lot of pressure onto the side of the leg in order for it to actually move. Let's try this one. This one's not moving. This one's not moving either. That one's not moving. So you really have to push down onto the leg itself in order to actually get it to actually buckle or move a little bit. But now I'm kind of like out of breath. <laughs> but aside from me actually pushing down specifically onto one leg, this whole tripod is extremely stable. Now, the last thing that I never went over in this video is the price of this tripod. The price of the tripod is $399 with the head and the legs and also comes with a carrying case. This is an absolute deal for like anybody out there who is like serious about filmmaking and needs a stable and sturdy tripod to add into their filmmaking kit. This is as cheap as it gets when it comes to a carbon fiber tripod and also with this one latch system for all three legs. The closest competitor I can think of is something like Satchelor. They also have this one latch system that raises all three legs, but that costs thousands of dollars. This only costs $399. Now, obviously for 
beginners and hobbyists, you probably don't want to invest in a $300, $400 video tripod. You probably don't need it. But for filmmakers who are out in productions or any type of professional work, you probably would want a stable and sturdy tripod. And at $399, it really doesn't get that much cheaper for the features that you're getting with this tripod. All right, that's it for this video. I might be doing a longer term review video of this tripod just because I want to take it out into more productions and do a little bit more testing out in the field as I'm actually using it and then report back to you guys on an update about how it worked out or maybe it held up, maybe it didn't. Um, so stay tuned for that video. If you like this video, hit that like button and make sure to subscribe for more videos just like this one. Until next one, my name is Alex Chung and I'll see you later. Bye.